this poem, which I've always loved, um, mm. and Philip Larkin chose it as his representation of Mickey's work in um, his 20th century for the contemporary poetry, um, is entitled Dooley as a Traitor. <coughs> and it's um, a model one. So then you won't fight. Yes, Your Honor, I said, that's right. Now, is it that you simply aren't willing, or have you a fundamental moral objection to killing? says the judge, blowing his nose and making his words stand to attention in long rows. I stand to attention too, but with half a, half a grin. In my time, I've done a good many in. No objection at all, sir, I said. There's a deal of the world I'd rather see dead, such as Johnny Stubbs or Fred Settle or my last landlord, Mr. Syme. Give me a gun and your blessing, Your Honor, and I'll be killing them all the time. But my conscience says a clear no to killing a crowd of gentlemen I don't know. Why, I'd as soon think of killing a worshipful judge, high court, like yourself, against whom God knows I've got no grudge so far, <laughs> as murder a heap of foreign folk. If you've got no grudge, you've got no joke to laugh at after. Now, the words never come flowing proper for me till I get the old pipe going, and just as I was poking down backy, the judge looks up sharp with, No smoking, Mr. Dooley, we're not fighting this war for fun, and we want a clearer reason why you refuse to carry a gun. This war is not a personal feud, it's a fight against wrong ideas on behalf of the right. Mr. Dooley, won't you help destroy evil ideas? Ah, Your Honour, here's the tragedy, I said. I'm not a man of the mind. I couldn't find it in my heart to be unkind to an idea. I wouldn't know one if I saw one. I haven't one of my own, so I'd best be leaving other people's alone. Indeed, he sneers at me. This defence is curious for someone with convictions in two senses. A criminal invokes conscience to his aid to support an individual withdrawal from a communal crusade sanctioned by God, led by the church, against a godless churchless nation. I asked his honour for a translation. <laughs> you talk of conscience, he said. What do you know of the Christian creed? Nothing, sir, except what I can read. That's the most you can hope for from us jailbirds. I just open the book here and there and look at the words. And I find when the Lord himself misliked an evil notion, he turned it into a pig and drove it squealing over a cliff into the ocean, and the loony ran away to live and think another day. There was a clean job done and no blood shed. Everybody happy and forty wicked thoughts drowned dead. A neat and Christian murder. None of your mad slaughter throwing away the brains with the blood of the baby with the bathwater. Now, I look at war as a sportsman. It's a matter of choosing the decentest way of losing. Heads or tails, losers or winners, we all lose, we're all damn sinners. And I'd rather be with the poor, cold people at the wall that shot than the bloody, guilty devils in the firing line, in hell and keeping hot. But what right, Dooley, what right, he cried, have you to say that the Lord is on your side? That's a dirty, wicked question, back I roared. I said not the Lord was on my side, but I was on the side of the Lord. Then he was up at me and shouting, but by and by he calms. Now, we're not doubting your sincerity, Dooley, only your arguments, which don't make sense. Hello, I thought, that's the wrong way round. I may be skylarking a bit, but my brain pan's sound. <laughs> then, biting his nail and sugaring his words sweet, keep your head, Mr. Dooley, religion is clearly not up your street, but let me ask you as a plain patriotic fellow whether you'd stand there so smug and yellow if the foe were attacking your own dear sister. I'd knock their brains out, mister. On the floor, I said. There. He says kindly, I knew you were no pacifist. It's your straight duty as a man to enlist. The enemy is at the door. You could have downed me with a feather. Where? I gasped, looking round. Not this door, he says, angered. Don't play the clown. But they're 2,000 miles away planning to do us down. Why, the news is full of the deeds of those murderers and rapers. Your eminence, I said. My father told me never to believe the papers, but to go by my eyes, and at 2,000 miles, the poor things can't tell truth from lies. His fearful spectacles glittered like the moon. For the last time, what right has a man like you to refuse to fight? More right, I said, than you. You've never murdered a man, so you don't know what it is I won't do. I've done it in good hot blood, so haven't I the right to make bold to declare that I shan't do it in cold? Then the judge rises in a great rage and writes, Dooley is a traitor in black upon a page and tells me I must die. What, me? says I. If you still won't fight. Well, yes, Your Honour, I said. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh,
struck a blow for a very fine but underrated fellow, James Mickey, M-I-C-H-I-E, and you can find that in Philip Larkin's 20th century poetry. Uh, 